thank you for the privilege to be in your presence. As humble as we are created, fearfully made. Oh Lord, the privilege to join the rank of angels to be able to sing to your praise. Father, we return all the glory and praise to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Hallelujah voices will not be joining us, but they will join us tomorrow. Praise God. We spoke later in the afternoon and she expressed that to me. But she'll be here tomorrow to the glory of God. That will give us ample time to do what the Lord wants to have us do tonight. Once again, I want to solicit your rapt attention for tonight's meeting. I've been very encumbered all day because of the weight of what God wants to transfer into loss into our lives tonight. I believe that there's something of me that God has given to me, something that I've enjoyed, something that has been part of my journey, part of my story, that God wants to transfer upon certain persons, you know, today, such that this year will be so tremendous and different from all the years, you know, that you have spent all your life. Uh, tonight, the Lord, them, you know, prodded me to anointing for prosperity. Anointing for prosperity. I can say confidently, to the level of my work and obedience with God, that I enjoy God's prosperity in diverse ways. I have tested and I have basked in the enormity of God's prosperity upon a man. I know what it means for God to prosper a man. And I know what it means for a man not to function by the prosperity of God, but by his own strength. But tonight, I want to bring to us some certain enlightenment about God's dimension of, you know, this expression of God, which is the prosperous dimension of God that he bestows on his people. The Bible says that the blessings of the Lord make it rich without adding sorrow to it. Tonight, I will be taking my text from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. The word of the Lord to his people so that they can be conscious of what it does in their lives in the arena of prosperity. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. He said, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God for it is he that giveth the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he sworn unto thy fathers, as it is this day. He said, Thou shalt remember the Lord for one thing. He says, This remembrance pertains the covenant of wealth. That he had with your forefathers. So, as a result of a subsisting and existing covenant, he says, his anointing is around you to give you power to reproduce wealth. In Christ Jesus, there is a covenant of wealth that can be yours now and in eternity. And don't be deceived about that. Some persons believe in principles. They believe in, you know, uh, laws. See, prosperity, according to the power of God, does not function by laws and principles alone. There's a dimension of the anointing that causes a man to prosper beyond principles and laws. And abilities and Jesus came to this earth and demonstrated the power of God's prosperity before us all what principle of multiplication can turn five loaves of bread 
to 5,000 loaves. Who is a mathematician here? By what can you multiply five to feed 5,000 men without counting women? Say prosperity. prosperity. Jesus demonstrated that it is not by physical resources you attain and you experience those blessings in this life. There are sources of provision. There are sources of wealth that is not controlled by central bank. For 40 years, God demonstrated this power of prosperity to ensure that his people were catered for in the wilderness. Business is not business. Business. Many of us in the past years we have been busy. But we have not been doing business. But by the reason of the anointing that will come upon you tonight, going forward in your international engagement in this world of business, you will begin to attain the realm of prophecy. And then you begin to attain the realm of prophets. In the name of Jesus. God gives his people power to prosper. I've had to interact with certain persons that believe that it is by their efforts they will succeed in this life. A man in the book of Luke, Jesus told us the story that thought he has succeeded by his efforts. Not according due respect to the source of his wealth. The Bible says that he woke up, he saw his wealth said, therefore, relax, O my soul, for your hand has made this. The one that gave him power to make wealth demanded his soul that night. The scripture says, no one receives anything except that which is given from above. If you like, operate seven laws of prosperity and see what happens. Wealth in the kingdom answers to the power of God. So it is He that gives you power to multiply wealth. This will not function by the sweat of your brow anymore. Amen. See, people are dead. They are, can I say amen? amen. And then you will not function by the sweat of your brow anymore. Designed us to enjoy a prosperous life. When God created Adam and Eve in the garden, He put them in a prosperous environment. He did not create us to be poor. He said that God planted a garden called Eden, and four rivers met at the center of the garden. That is flourishing. And everything that the first man needed to thrive and to survive was made available in the garden. You know what God said to Adam? He said, Tend and care the garden. Tend well and enjoy it. It was not until sin came that it became a matter of course that we had to strive to eat. And the Bible says that if any man is in Christ, is what? It's a new creature. It is a cause to struggle in this life. And what the anointed one called Christ has come to do, the Bible says that he has come to redeem us from the cause of the law. He became a cause. Now that the scripture says that he was made poor so that you and I can become rich. If indeed you are in Christ, I heard certain preachers say that, you know, our following of Christ or our calling Christ does not include material words. Who says? That it only ever is only help is wealth is part of the package in Christ. It says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. And be in health. Even as your soul prospers. That prosperity is not talking about eternal prosperity. And 
everybody that has walked with God with their heart were made prosperous in this life. Everybody God has called, none of them died empty or in an entity. None of them were, were non entities. Noah walked with God. He had the capacity to build the biggest ship that has ever been on earth. Where did he see the world to build that ship? Abraham walked with God. He became an intimidation to kings in his days. He a side treaty with him. Abimelech came to him, said, You have become too powerful. How can a man be too powerful for a nation? I was sharing with you today that Abraham ventured to go and contend for the life of Lot. He had 318 men that were born in his house. Excuse me, he can he used to feed 318 men. Eh? No, sir. Is he carried it? Those men had wives and children. They feed from Abraham's. So much so that when Abraham was coming back from that battle with so much wealth and resources, the king of Sodom thought he would intimidate him. He said, Take the wealth, I don't need it. So that you will not say, I make Abraham rich. Genesis chapter 13. There's a kind of prosperity and wealth to my God will transfer into you. That when men come in connection with you this year, they won't be able to recognize you by your new status. God prospers. God enriches. God makes a man to be wealthy. Don't be deceived by religion. Holiness is not synonymous with poverty. Righteousness is not an affliction. In this life, you must understand there is always a force behind every prosperity. When we are talking about prosperity, my focus is on God, but it's not only God that makes a man prosper. I won't lie to you. There is always a force, either a godly force or a satanic force. No one a man and become so well in this life be, be, without a spiritual force driving it. At times, the persons can be actively conscious of that force. But at times, these forces are passive. There are spiritual forces that are interested in what happens here. In this place that we have, wealth is one of the ways that kingdoms are propagated. Wealth is one of the ways influences are established. Wealth is one of the ways things are controlled. You must understand that when Jesus came, Jesus realized and he understood. That he needed a force beyond his natural ability to prosper in ministry. And he went to fast for 40 days and 40 nights. Because he understood that by Gira Gira, I cannot be relevant, though I am God in the flesh. I need something external. And Satan understood that outcry in his heart for that need. Jesus needed prosperity also to advance his ministry. Are you understand all that? Yes, sir. Jesus needed wealth, wealth to advance his ministry. The Bible spoke about some rich women that were sponsoring his ministry. Yes, sir. Are you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You think Jesus did not use money? He had a treasure that carried back. Yes. What was in the bag? Money. Say, I need money this year. I need money this year. Jesus spent money. Yes, sir. And when Judas was not available, when he needed to spend money, maybe he had run away with the money, he had to tell Peter. Go and catch the fish and bring. He did not speak in tongues to the stand collectors. He not was speaking in tongues. Bring your money. Bring your money. Mommy, you went to the market today. Yesterday, you are going to the market this morning. When you go to the market, what is tomato salad? Bako shakala go shoko. What about you? No. 
You went out Canada to my house today. Was it all you gave your Canada man? Money answered all things. Yes, sir. Without money, the generator will not be working now. Yes, sir. So Jesus Himself made an appetite. God, how am I going to fulfill this ministry without resources? And Satan had it. Satan came to him in the second temptation. The Bible says that I took Jesus to a high place and showed him the kingdom of this world and all the money. And Satan beat his chest. He said, They are mine, and I can give it to whoever I will to give it to. Just dance to my tune. Let's do ministry my way. Satan was not lying. Satan can prosper a man too. Yes, sir. And he told Jesus, let me prosper you. And he showed Jesus what it is that he can give him. And Jesus saw it was moved. He shook. And Jesus said, No, thou shalt not worship. Only God alone shall you what? Worship. worship. If he did not catch Jesus' attention, he would not respond. Satan prospers, but the prosperity of the devil is not free. I always tell people that I'll tell you that we are boys. If you want to do that way, let me advise you so that I can do it. Because they say I teach you that people. But let me teach you God. <laughs> if you want to do that way and prosper, please bargain well with the devil. Don't let him give you car. And one hundred thousand today, and tomorrow another one hundred thousand. The cost of the whole world that Satan must give you is your soul. If you want to go to where, go to where properly. Don't go to where because of Corona. Do that Corona. Tell you, they don't even drive new cars. Yes, sir. Don't go to hell because of alloy weed. Back in, sitting there, sitting there, okay, I want to go to where with you. Offer me what to offer Jesus. You know why? He will not offer you because you don't have value yes, that Jesus has. He said, just worship me. Give me influence in your life and I will give you the whole world. The work of your soul is the whole world. Anything less, Satan has cheated you. God prospers. Satan prospers. Because prosperity is fundamental to influence in this world. And God and Satan are interested in the prosperity. Why do you think that a madman will be singing jagos and be having money and things will be going nowhere? What do you think is the, is the force of the devil? Because Satan wants to use his prosperity to destroy the lives of many. He wants to propagate his own kingdom. And he looks for mad men. People that he can influence and empower in the work of wickedness. And that is why you yourself, you must come to a point that you decide which side, who, who am I looking at for prosperity. And if God is God, you serve him. And he blesses. If the devil, or you can't be doing Back and forth, no. Satan is interested in the affairs. I've said it that and the other time I spoke about um, with Houston. Let me use Michael Jackson as an example today. What level of wealth does that man seek that doesn't have? He had everything. Michael Jackson will be ministry, people will be falling under the anointing. You think it's only God that gives anointing? And he had wealth. But excuse me, for all the wealth he has, what was was there any meaning to his life right now? Even his estate, his houses now are functions. They are functioning them. The prosperity of the wicked is inherited by people that did not even work for it around them. The Bible says that they heap up wealth for strangers.
a politician that recently in this state. I heard a story even before they buried him. They started fighting over money that they found in his house. I won't mention his name because I don't want police fight. Before they buried him, people have started sharing, and there are many houses they cannot even trust me. That tenants have is a very devastating life for you to labor to amass wealth. 24 hours after your death, strangers are already feasting on them. What a miserable life. But the Bible says that the prosperity of the Lord has no sorrow attached to it. That's the kind of anointing that they don't want to manifest into. Amen. I receive it. And that's the kind you don't want to transfer into your life tonight. Amen. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 17. It says, God says the Lord of hosts. My city shall again spread out to prosperity. The Lord again will comfort Zion and we again chose Israel. Look at what God said here. He said, My city will what? Spread out to what? Prosperity. One thing that God spoke to me that will happen in the latter days in the church that wealth will be in the hands of two sons and daughters of the kingdom. Amen. People that have that have been validated to be their new sons and daughters. He said, wealth will be given to them. Because through wealth, through prosperity, my city will be spread about. It is important to know that power to get wealth is not common sense or knowledge. As may be tempted to define it. It is a painful delusion and a height of struggle to think that only by your effort you can bring about words. Some people in the rank amongst us as believers believe that you don't need God to make money. Even our hard men of God say that. That you don't need God to make money in this life. I agree to a large extent. But sincerely speaking, there are levels of prosperity that you can't attain without God. There are levels of oppressions in this life that you won't need a supernatural, a spiritual force for you to attain. And no many of you will have names in your head. People that, the, uh, somebody has told me that the first 10 billionaires in this world, and in this world, are not believers, are not Christians. I agree with you. Excuse me, can you tell me when I in their room and know the force that was that's behind their went? There are forces in this life. Prosperity is given by God or by Satan. Every man also to whom that is Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 19. Look at what it says. Prosperity is given. So every man also to whom God has given what? Are you opening your Bible with me? What is Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 19? Who is there? Who is there? Every man. Every man, yes. Also to whom God has given riches and wealth. What did you say here? God has given riches and wealth. So whoever tells you that God does not give riches, God does not give wealth. Does not understand scriptures. Said so every man, God has given what riches, and, riches wealth. and wealth. My God give you, gives riches and wealth. The Bible says that Isaac, in the land of famine, everybody were going down to Egypt. God has stayed and gave him strategy. The Bible says that same year, Isaac invested and reaped what? Ten hundred fold returns. If you want to explain that in literary sense, excuse me, when you plant orange and you pluck from a particular uh, step, I mean, where did you pluck orange from? Can you go back and pluck from that same spot before? But the miracle, the dynamics of prosperity is that on the same spot, Isaac was reaping hundred times. No, but you do that. He said, 
in the same year, he lived on the food. And at the same time, to understand that God gives riches and wealth. And what I quoted before was in the book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 5 to 7. When Satan took Jesus to a high place and said, I can also give you riches and wealth. But Jesus referred him to God. Said, No, it's only God that I know that is the valid source of true riches and wealth. If you must strive this year, you must learn how to tap into the flow of God's prosperity for your life. And by the function of this anointing tonight, this will be activated upon you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I said the dimension to multiply wealth, the power to create wealth, the power to retain wealth, the power to sustain wealth, God will release upon you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I told you, I can't remember which day I told you that God said to me last year that he's going to raise millionaires amongst our own. But that was not fulfilled, but he said that is the only thing I carried over in the Jewish New Year. So in this new year, I'm going to multiply millionaires even among the young ones. Amen. Legitimate millionaires. People that will say it is God that taught me to make wealth. Amen. And it will come by the force of the anointing. Amen. When God opened the door of prosperity to a man, it looks like a dream. You will know which direction and what is bringing about this kind of doors. It is Google you are selling. It is Epa. Someone will just say, Excuse me, I got your Google. I had a call in, in the UK. We need like 200 bottles of Google and Epa, and they will pay you in pounds. And you'll be wondering. Do you know that there are some when God opens a door, it is the sun they are even selling to it, they will prosper. Ah! They are building a city in another town. Can you supply our sand? And you say, Yes, I can supply you sand. You don't even have a tipper. And you'll be the one supplying sand. And from there, you become a multi billionaire. It happens. Someone who just said, Can you just correct us? See, when God's power is behind the force of your prosperity, notwithstanding your limitations, it breaks all of that. Yes, sir. When the force of prosperity is backing you up, notwithstanding your capacity, your cup will run over. Yeah. Most of us, you think that is when you have a change of profession. Mommy, that your kukuru, have you, is it kukuru or bones or yam? You are fine. I have seen people that they don't know more than that kind of stuff. You will see them having mansions and skyscrapers. And people will say that they are doing juju. It's not juju, it's a force. You don't need to change trade. What does it to come upon your effort? It's power. The power of prosperity gives force to effort. And that prosperity power is the power behind, was the power behind David when he killed Goliath. A stone, a ordinary stone, with a common catapult, cannot even kill a bird. When you fire catapult to a bird, it will hit that the bird will fall down, you are still the one that will go there and kill it. But when this propelling, I will call it prosperous force, was behind the sling of David, he prospered against Goliath. The force of the anointing that makes a man prosperous will come upon you tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. But there are twists. There are some dimensions that you need to understand how this power works. Yes, it is God that gives you power to make wealth. But there is an actual word there. Make. Have you? God does not give you prosperity. What does he do? 
it gives you power to make it happen. Are you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. This anointing is not thought that you will get home tonight. Pastor has prayed for us. Apostle has anointed us, and you open your wardrobe and you will see dollars there. That's how it functions. It is not after you have drunk a bottle of oil, you'll be walking on the road and two people will be fighting and they will dash you a jeep. That's not how it happens. It's not as though you'll be walking and you'll receive a string back alert. They call it nuclear money. That is fraud, no prosperity. This is kind of prosperity. If you receive a string back like alert, go to the bank and yes, complain. Sir. Yes, sir. That I got an alert that is not, I don't know where can we trace it. Money is not what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. I'm talking about power to make. Right. And what is this power to make wealth? Two of them I'm going to teach us tonight. And I will do what God has asked me to do as an act tonight. And I believe that it will activate this prospering power. As little as I am, people around me know I enjoy this place. So I have the capacity to transfer it. Yes, sir. Strange forces bring about miraculous supplies. How many of us can bear witness to that? Yes, sir. People that have been around my life. Strange forces bring miraculous supplies, miraculous connections. How does this power to make wealth operate and how do you activate it? First and foremost, the first key that activates prosperity upon your life is the knowledge of God. I don't know why God has been repeating this since day one. Daniel chapter 11 verse 32 said, I saw that do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt with flatteries. But though they do know their God shall be strong and do everything. Knowing God is the ultimate key to prosperity. Genuine knowledge of God that functions by intimacy with him. Knowing somebody is not just having an idea of how a person looks like. Knowledge is being intimate with the person. The kind of knowledge I'm talking about is the knowledge that a wife and a husband share together. That level of intimacy and growing in. You are having a close intercourse with the person of God. How is it new God? If you do not know God, you won't have the capacity to hear God. When people are going to eat it and they will ask him, why are you staying? He will tell them that my God said I should stay. It is by that function of knowledge of God that brought about this prospect. For those that do know their God shall be strong and do expert. But look at the other person that the of scriptures. Say, for those that acted wickedly against the covenant. There's a covenant of prosperity that God has with his people. But if you act contrary, negatively, or ignorantly to that covenant, he said it will corrupt you with what? Flatteries. Flatteries means that the deceit. For you, you just wake up. They are talking about prosperity. They are prophesying. But it comes to vanity in my life. That is what flattery is. The word of power will have no effect or will not materialize into anything substantial in your experience because you are not aligning you do wickedly against the covenant wickedness in this sense means that acting contrary to what is right it's not, it's not going to go about doing evil many of us think that being active in intentional evil against people what it means to be wicked, no wickedness is also an act when you are ignorant about something and you are not acting right about a thing, it is wickedness didn't Jesus many will say, in your name I did this, Abi. I did this. They assumed the knowledge of God. What did the Bible say to them? Depart 
out of you, you walk cast on wickedness. So when you don't know what you want to do, or when you know what you want to do and you are not doing it, it is wickedness. It is also wickedness to be receiving calls during service. It's wickedness. For you are acting contrary to the covenant of God's presence here. You want to take us to go outside. And the time will come in this church, I don't pray it begins to happen soon. That the raw dimension of God's power will be visiting the people. You just receive holy ghost, you just have to pa. <laughs> God I beg you. <laughs> <laughs> it is a reference. You can worry cannot be here. Wow. And you are taking cause in his presence. It is purely a reference to God. I'm walking about doing service, moving up and down. It's also a reverence. All of these people should stop it. If you see angels standing around, we used to be behaving. The most angry, annoying part, people will be carrying charge that come and charge on the altar while service is going on. Aye. Fire will still start burning here. Act of irreverence in the presence of God. It is doing wickedly against the covenant. Those are little, little, little wickedness. Some will be going on. People will be cheating. They will do it. You will kill your head like this one day. Boom. <laughs> No! So in the heart, we can be against the covenant. Charlie corrupt will you not be a subject of corruption. Amen. 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 When you are in the church and somebody is trying to distract you, say to the person, get behind me, Satan. Yes. <laughs> the knowledge of God means having intimacy with God in such a way that it can teach you how to make wealth. The problem with most of us, I said it as a testimony yesterday, that God told me when I was starting my life, because I had knowledge with God, that don't go in this way of career, go in this way of career. I remember I was going to Abuja when I was living in Lagos, and I was in Abuja, and I was coming back, I needed to go to the park to enter a bus. And I got to the bus to the bus stop. This is how I became a multimillionaire. I got to the bus stop. I wanted to buy a newspaper. God said, clearly, buy the nation's newspaper. If you go to a newspaper stand, you know how many kinds of newspaper you can find in. Yes, sir. So I buy the nation's newspaper. And I bought the nation's newspaper. I'm telling you about power to make wealth. That is not by effort. Yes, sir. It's not by struggle. I bought the nation's newspaper. I was reading in the I didn't know why. I just saw an advert, a federal government advert, that there is one program called you win. Blah, 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 blah. I saw that I kept, I was coming to Lagos. And then when I get to Abuja, I, will, I spent two weeks or three weeks in Lagos. I returned to Abuja. God said, I told you buy the nation's newspaper. Where is it? And then, yeah, I look at my back, I see from the newspaper there. Power to make wealth. I brought out the newspaper. I saw it. I ran to Ministry of Trade and Investment. They did the advert. They said it's not here. That I should go to small and scale, medium scale industry in Galiki. I ran to the place. Ah! They said it is closing tomorrow. I, I, I don't have the information. They said, don't worry. I will send you a mail. A stranger, no guy. Send me a mail. Drop your email address. Sincerely speaking, I saw the email around 6 p.m. and it was closing at 12 in the night. And I applied. Like me, like played. My wife can testify. I saw my name among over a million people that applied. The server did not crash for me to submit an application. I submitted it. They were going to select 6,000 out of 1,000, 1 million, 1.2 million people that applied. I was among the 6,000 they chose. Ah. Like this. They sent us to. Uh, Lagos Business School, Pan African University at that time. All expenses paid that they are going to streamline us to 1,200. They want to give only 310 million. Ah. They will give some other people uh, two They shall have divided it. When the name came out, I was among the 300 they gave 10 million. By 
by the voice of the Spirit. Yes, sir. Not loan, grant. Use it to do business. Not paying back federal government. Say, yeah. 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 The knowledge intimacy. Yes, sir. He said, You shall hear a voice saying, This is the right way. What hearing? So when I'm talking, I'm not just talking theory. Yes, sir. They didn't just give us 10 million. They sent us to the best of school. Gave us the best. That's how my business picked up in a strange city. I entered Abuja in one year. I be talking to a woman came to my office. Said your office is like someone that has been in this town for 15 years. Knowledge of God and my life has been like that. Specific direct instructions because of intimacy with God. You can enjoy that. By intimacy, God showed up to Isaac and say, In the land, that Genesis chapter 26, verse 1 to 14. By intimacy with God, God showed up to Jacob and showed him strategies to multiply wealth, even in captivity. When you're forced by think as an employee, you can't be rich. Who says? Jacob was an employee. In Laban's house. In Laban's house. <laughs> he said in the visions of the night, he had a revelation that some animals are meeting to put water and something inside water. When they are drinking, he saw it and he practicalized it and it was working. God will show you what we work this Amen. year. Amen. You think it's just an imagination of his mind? It is not in any reproductive textbook. There are some biology textbooks that are able to prove that to be true, even now. But by intimacy, by the knowledge of God, by acknowledgement of God, he saw something that looks so insignificant. In the visions of the night, there are some people here this year. In the visions of the night, God will download into us strategies to become a millionaire. Amen. Strategies to make wealth. Every word you put it says for doing it was multiplying words. Ah, the Bible says that seven times Levi changed strategy with him. Seven times God was improving his strategy for them, Jacob. God will improve his strategy. Amen. Amen. Ah, Levi will say, oh, this is Okay, this time around we are changing. We are not giving you this again. We are giving you this. You two will rearrange the strategy. You think? If you are fortunate by this, I know you can be cheated. No. Anything that they do to cheat you will be multiplying Amen. your advantage. Say the knowledge of God. Knowledge knowledge of God. Say the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God. And if you choose, David must stole the children of Israel. I said, I played before you to the land of death. I'm not going to deny the fact that the knowledge of the devil, a certain degree too, will bring you well. But what is the essence of the word that destroys you now? And makes you forfeit your soul eternally. The Bible says there's only a fool that will see a pit and walk into it. Some of these things, several will tell you that it's only for five years we used to spend this word. They say, I agree. It is a lack of understanding and a lack of, I don't even know what I would call it, that has wired you for eternal destruction and damnation. If it is worth to seek, seek genuine relationship with God. That is the first key. The second key is create channels in your life for the flow of prosperity. And I'm going to spend a lot of time here. Create channels in your life for what? Prosperous flow. And the first channel I will say you create in your life is skillfulness. Acquisition of skill and development is one of the channels God multiplies wealth. I said it some days ago that if you multiply one billion by zero, what do you have? What do you have, Daddy? Zero. This anointing does not function in a vacuum. In the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 52. The Bible says that Jesus develops skill, and, and Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature, 
and as a result, he grew in favor with God with men. and men. Jesus got us know about of a miracle. At age 12, he was acquiring skill. The Bible said that we sit with the teachers of the law, was sharpening. Jesus developed academic skill through as a carpenter. And when they were looking for him, he told his mother, Don't you know? I must go about my father's business. In what way was he going about his father's business then? By developing, preparing himself for the father's business. You can be here, I can pray and prophesy, and you shout one million hallelujah. If there is nothing in your life that you can anchor, it will be nothing. David did not stand before Goliath. Goliath, fall down and that, fall down and that. Is that what he did? No. no. Is that what he did, Pastor? What did he do? He went down, brought five foot sharp stone. In fact, the Bible describes the shape of the stone. It is a skillful man that will know that the kind of stone that will kill a man must be sharp and smooth. Why didn't he carry a rock? Technical skill in slinging. Skillfulness. And when he was being recommended for, for, for Saul, the man that was recommending him said, I know a young man, very skillful in the playing of harp and instrument. His arms of the ludi is by his skill he was recommended for lifting. Many of the young people here will be sleeping, will be doing WhatsApp, WeChat, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. That's why your life is ticking up. <laughs> you should be ticking up, you are ticking talk. No skill. Even when somebody will remember you for favor, what can this person do? Nothing. The Bible like says Jesus increased in wisdom, increased in stature, and in favor with God and man. God does not multiply vacuum or bless mediocrity. It is a prophet or a man of God that wants to deceive you. That will say, if you sow, I need five people here that will sow 100,000 for the next level. I just want to chop your money. For that to work, even if it is prophetic, there must be an anchor in your life. Even Babala will not do shall without asking you, what do you do? Yeah, I have not gone there before. Daddy, can you advise me? You have gone there. <laughs> but it's true. Do not do shall for you or nothing. Eh? Do they do shout for you or not? If you are not doing it, don't have a job, don't have a business, they don't want to do more. Yes. Yes. That's what you are doing. That's what they will activate. When I want to God bless me, and God is asking, what is in your hand? God does not multiply back. You need to develop. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 12. It says, The Lord will open the heavens and the storehouse is born to, to send rain on your land in season and bless all the works of your hands. You will lend to nation and not borrow. But we will only cut and shall lend to nation and not borrow with nothing in your hand. You will continue to borrow. There's no work in your hand, I said, no borrow. Ah. So called loan, the stars will start looking for you. Fair money. Fair money. <laughs> Mention there. Ajay money. Sacrificity with them after service. Exodus chapter 20, verse 9. It says, Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. There is dignity in labor. In the book of Proverbs chapter 16, verse 16, the Bible says that the gift of a man opened doors for him and ushered the giver into the presence of the great. It is the gift of a man that opens door for him, but it is the skill that keeps the door open. This year, Develop and sharpen your academic skill. 
excuse me, I have been preaching to you. If I don't understand good communication of English, can you enjoy my message? No, sir. Eh? It is the gift of the anointing upon my life, of God upon my life, is being expressed by the skill of what? Communication. I develop it, and then you don't give me. Many of you have even gone to school beyond me. But this communication skill, I develop it by reading. I have there was a year I was reading dictionary, not reading a book. A, a, B, I was reading dictionary. I develop. Now I'm developing a skill to break up. I develop it so high. I want to develop another skill. I told somebody yesterday I'm going to go and buy Brighton grammar. So I can learn how to communicate in simple tense. Develop academic skill. You're asking God to promote you, but your academic qualification since you finished school has not passed SSC. Oh, yeah. Even the SSC itself, you cannot remember what is two plus two. <laughs> I was in Abuja and I wanted to employ an accountant. And I put an advert on Jobberman. I was shocked. That all the interview I did, I could not find a simple accountant. People that went to school but are not educated. I call them educated illiterates. And I was asking one guy that time, can you prepare a statement of account? He said, yes, say how? He said, I will go to bank and go and ask for bank statement. Hi. Uh, yeah, F9. F9. Even an SS2 student of accounting know what financial statement is. Yes, sir. Another one that is entries in a ledger. Mm. That means it is not credit the giver. Double entry principle. Double entry principle. He cannot tell a graduate of accounting. Skinless, certified illiterate. Skinless. Develop craftsmanship skill. David did not go to the four walls of school. His brother went to military school. Are you understand what I'm saying? His brother was sponsored to ministry school, but he developed skill at the backside of the bush. So school is not the issue here, but hunger for development is the matter. When he was ending his own school at the backside of the wilderness, even what he can confront, his brother that went to ministry school could not confront. If it is tailor you are learning, learn it and come out excellently well. Be the best tailor in town. Even the best person you refer to Mark Zuckerberg is now that Albert begged him to come and collect his education. He did not finish there. But he developed technical skills in such a way that even the school Albert that he went were coming to study in how he came about that knowledge. You can become so phenomenal in your field of engagement that you become a subject of study. Mm. Are you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You will become a field of an academic field. There was a tailor I read about. He went to learn tailoring. And when he finished, she started sewing for pregnant and breastfeeding mothers. So she would sew fine clothes with sleek silk. So when people wear fine clothes, you know, breastfeeding mothers cannot wear gown because they want to breastfeed. But she will sew turtle neck, dead cup suits, and just put one design. You think it's a design? So as the, as the mother wants to break them, just see. And people see and don't call it a documentary. Tailoring skill. Yeah, she has become a subject. And they were asking, how do you make it fit them? Started teaching people in fashion skill. Skill. Craftsmanship. When God gave Moses revelation of how to build all that he gave him to build on the month, he said there are some people in your camp that have the gift of craftsmanship. And only he said they can fashion all kinds of things with gold and with silver. Do you think an angel came, broke their head, and put it there? No. If you must prosper, I'm prospering today. People call me out of the blues. The only reason I'm coming to my mind, the young God putting them there, is they know that I have the capacity to do it. I did a job for one company for three years ago. They have carried the job everywhere. They have paid over 25 million to one company for a And they called me. And they said they needed it in two days. 
and I deliver, you know what the story I'm talking about. I deliver the job in two days. The head of the company called me. He said, thank you, you have saved up from embarrassment. They called me and said, how much is the money? I said, seven million. They were begging me with five million. Skill. And in two days, I delivered it. They were celebrating it. I delivered on my own terms. I'm not just talking about prayer. Ka, 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 ka. There is no prayer I can pray that the company will come here and have no skill. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I developed this skill at a young age. I told her I deprived myself. At 21, 22, I was driving myself mad. There was no computer. I was writing codes on paper. So when people speak ignorantly of how I make money, I just pity them. I had no personal computer. That was not an excuse. Then to browse was 1,500 naira per one hour. Browsing. Because there was no computer anywhere. You only have cyber cafes, one in the town. And I got that told me, go and then IT. So what I do is I will carry paper, I will write codes, I will save 1,005 for two weeks. For one hour, I will just go to a Itaba cafe. When eventually they start have a night browsing for 3,000, I will save 3,000 to go all night. I only eat once a day, that's what I'm used to not eating today. Because there is even no money to eat. I only eat bread and beans at 12 o'clock, till the next 12 o'clock, because that is 15 hours. 15 hours bread, 15 hours bread, they would. They will cut it into two and put it there. It's sweeter than burger. <laughs> Try <and> cheese burger. <laughs> Go and try it. We'll not, it's not eating burger. Hot <laughs> beans inside bread. Ah. You're eating it. Sweeter than burger. White bread. White bread. Come on, I you. You are in the same Come on, Rick. Come on, Rick. Your story will be. Amen. Try cheeseburger. See him after service. After service. <laughs> you pay price to develop skill. Many young girls, many young boys, they want to use iPhone 14 or iPhone 24. When there is not, when your head is empty, your future will be empty. <laughs> you want to eat your future today? Who is doing you? Village people. What is doing you? I don't know how I used to wear baggy fashion label yesterday. Pay the price now. The, when I see people laboring hard at 40, 50, 60, I pity them. 40, 50, 60 years should be your years of consolidation. So when you see them pulling truck, what it means that they have wasted their usefulness. What will make a man of 50 years become a security man? Become a get man, a man of 50, 60 years. <laughs> he has wasted, he has wasted the youthful days. He has no skills, so at his old age, he needs to live up to survive. At your old age, you not live up to survive. Amen. You have done preparation. Yes, you have been preparing the right way. It's not a cost. It's a matter of time. There is limit to which my wife can do preparation now. She's, it's only me that she's valuable for. <laughs> After four. That's the bad thing. Yeah, you know the bad That cost is that, that it's only me. Yes, sir. Even me, right now, I'm very relevant for a kind of person. Yes, sir. The sister girl I want to marry say Baba. That's all you call me. Grandpa. Lie, you. You have money. If I thought they agreed to marry, they'll be hiding in their small somewhere. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Simple. Yeah. Times and seasons. The Bible says that chances, or what God is saying, time and chances. Time and chance happen to them, them opportunity and time. The Bible says that it's good to bear your joke while you are young. Develop talents. Your talent develop it because prosperity is a reward for value. Prosperity is what a reward, a reward for, for value. value. Nobody will call you. I like your face, you are beautiful. Take 10 billion. Ah. A value driven life will attract wealth. 
Proverbs chapter 14 said the crown of the wise is their wealth, but the folly of the fools bring folly. The folly of the fools. See, if you want to be relevant, start creating values. Start creating values. Just do something. Money is a reward for value. That is why people that always give money, they cannot understand the value of money. People that do, does not work, they don't, they don't understand the value of money. That's why you give them 10,000, they'll still be looking at you. Yes, sir. Ah, as rich as I post to it, it's only 10,000 I can give you. Mm. I've given somebody money before. And one thing that pains me is when I give people money and they can't even acknowledge that I've received it. Some people call you, sir, please, I need help. You send the money to them. If you are the one that will call them the second day, did you receive the money? Mm. Bad habit. Such people cannot prosper. If somebody gives you 1,000 naira, acknowledge it. It was a function of his sweat. Somebody will give you money, you won't acknowledge for months. And uh, when they ask you, I share no sir. What kind of attitude is that? Even Jesus was paid when he hit the lepers, only one that returned. If he did not pay, he will not say anything. He won't mention it. He now turned the blessing of the first, of, of the only one, so that he can show the others. Hmm. When you don't know how to offer value, you cannot appreciate gesture of value. Value will attract wealth to itself. Value creation brings wealth generation. Value creation brings wealth generation. And this one struck me when the Holy Spirit dropped in my mind. Niches get riches. Let me ask you. When you create a niche for yourself to drive value, okay. you will get riches. Niches, N I C H E S. Get R I C H E S. Niches. Attract riches. The best way to attract money into your life is to create a value for a specific audience. Create a niche for yourself and drive value and grow rich in that niche. Sit down. The year is still virgin. Have a conference with yourself. Create a niche. Don't be a jack of all trades. That one niche. Cultivate it. I told you yesterday, your purpose is not disconnected from your gifts, immediate gifts and values. What you are doing currently, sit around it. You are a carpenter. Create a niche of carpentry. Spend look at what, what can I do differently in the carpentry industry. That one will make you different from other competitors. There's nobody here that cannot create a niche. There are some things in the life of in your life, that even if you are fighting with the person that is supplying it, that you don't stop patronizing the person. Yes, sir. Are you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. No matter how I don't like that, this face. If my pump machine stop working, I will call it. Yes, sir. <laughs> eh? Yes. Otherwise, what will happen? No, no, no. Sir, if you are the only bakery, no matter how many people say about you, the day you don't break, they will come and line up. Create a special niche that when they are looking for that thing, you are the only one they are looking for. Skillfulness. Say skillfulness. Skillfulness. Skill in your place of work, create a niche for yourself. Let there be, as I'm coming here this tonight, I've been receiving from several courses, different customer complaints. If I don't cough, Nothing will happen in their company. Mm. Nothing. I'm beating my chest. I was praying at the same time I could not put up my phone because putting up my phone is death sentence to certain organizations. <laughs> Are you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Make your certain dispensable with your niche. Even to me, make yourself so indispensable. Increase your value that I cannot sleep until I sleep. 
coming to church, I will drive to your house. There are some people there in this church. When they say they are no more doing, I say I'm going. I say, okay, let's send you a set of party. When this kind of say I'm going, I will drive there. You are not going anywhere. Die here. Yes, sir. Together. Die here. We do what? We die here. But some people say that going. When? Now? You need to Oh, yeah. Just skillfulness. Skillfulness. Value makes you indispensable to men. Mm. Value makes you so indispensable. This, this is common practice. Number two, beyond skillfulness, I'm still talking about creating channels of prosperity. One is skillfulness. Number two, venture into a career or a business. Engage your skill in a career or a business. The Bible says, I don't want light and lamp and put it under what? A blue chair. Business and your skill is called structure. Career around your skill is called structure. I have a younger sister that many people know today, very big madam. My middle younger sister. She was staying with me in my house. One day I called her, I said, Funke, create a line in credit. Then she was working in the microfinance bank. She was thinking that no value. I said, You have been looking for a job. Every job you are getting is from microfinance bank to another. Don't you think there's a destiny around credits? Develop skill, take certifications, take courses, and run credits. And that has been what is taking away right now. Yes, sir. How can a man wake up one day and send letters to all the enemies of bank and back all of them call her? To change his job like changing clothes. Am I lying? No, sir. She changed his job. She left a company and went to another company. They went for a dinner, she met the HR of that company she left. She said, why did you leave us? She said, you give me a happy hour, come back, come tomorrow. Then uh, she was sitting in the interview. Why do you think you wouldn't leave again? He said, if you don't treat me, I will stay. They still came out. They said, she was not even expecting it. Said, because she was not, she didn't need it. Mm. So I said, why do you leave me? I'm again. You will run away again. He said, yes. If I say, a better offer. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of, when people are sweaty. You get a job. Mm. Because if you see a CV, I'm, I'm setting practical examples so that we're not just talking. So when you see her come and she's driving a big car and she's like, uh, Christian, it is money that is making her up. <laughs> Creates a structure around your skill and business. Jerome chapter 20 verse 2 says, I will bless the work of God. Jerome chapter 30 verse 9 said, Then the Lord of God will make you prosperous in all the works of your hand, in the fruit of your womb, and the young of your life, Lord, and the Lord will again delight in you and make you prosperous. Why? Because there is a work in your hand that you are doing. Don't be busy bodies. Don't be busy bodies. Be a business person, business and private person. And number three is diligence. I'm giving you about keys to prosperity. Some of us are indeed our business, but we are mediocre around our businesses. The Bible says that the hand of the diligent will rule. It's not enough to have a business. The Bible says, See that a man that is diligent in his business, he shall stand. And before kings and not mean men. Diligence. You can't be lazy and prosperous. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 24. Said the hand of the diligent shall rule, but the slothful shall end in poverty. The root of poverty is slothfulness and laziness. The level of my prosperity right now is limited by some measure of laziness and laxity that can still be found in my family. I'm not lying to you. And a lazy man cannot be a great man. Because a lazy man will always have an entitlement mentality. Mm-hmm. That many of them are no. They have entitlement. They, are, they think they are entitled to, to your wealth. Mm. Lazy. 
And Paul was writing to the Philippians. Say, he that does not work should not what? Eat. So when you are having scarcity in your life, know that it's God that is taking food away from your table. There's no way God will prosper a lazy man. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10. Said, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Many of you want you have exam, you want to write exam. You will come and bring your pile and your paper that you pour oil on them. Oil what? Is it palm oil or pour it? <laughs> you have not read. You have not studied. And you think somebody that does not even know God, that has been going in the night candles, God will be so unjust to make you pass and make him say, They play. Say, God cannot be mocked. But say, Man, so he shall reap. Complete the pen, let me soak it in an anointing oil that I've been under my abu, abi abu. For months, you will go there. You are asking, you are, you are writing physics paper. Parallel. It is your Bible, you ask. <laughs> You will see some people. I don't know why I'm using Taylor and Taylor. You see some people. When they gave me a shirt that somebody sold for me, what was I looking for? He said, Look at the shirt. You are swearing like this, Taylor. <laughs> no excellence. Even if I have better clothes, I will look for somebody else, not you. If you like, go all night and pray, Lord, make a post to bring clothes for me. Or I give you clothes to, to, to dry cleaners, a dry cleaner, and I'm seeing iron stamp on it. And number four, before we get to pray tomorrow, is giving. I deliberately did not put this one first so that you will not think I'm looking for money. But sincerely speaking, prosperous people are generous people. Prosperous men are generous men. You cannot take it away from the chemistry of prosperity. Give us, don't lack. Give us. Don't get stranded. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 25. So a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. That is true. Some of us are so stingy. And we are the most spirits. spirits. A man that gives cannot run out of supply. A tap that is open-ended cannot be dry. A tap that gives you water before that is suffering from dryness. No. It is a fundamental natural law that when you give, you get. One of my decisions this year is I will not stand on this altar and raise money for any program anymore. That's one of my decisions. That's why this program we are doing. Have I asked anybody for one couple? I've made up my mind, it will never happen. But I will teach the principles of giving. It is not pride, it is just a position I've taken. Lest anybody say it is by their words we are running things here. It's a decision I took. And the minister can testify. I've never asked them. The guests that are coming, all of them take honorarium. But I've made up my mind that lest anybody will say, it is by our resources we are not only sure here. It will not happen here. Amen. God will take glory. Amen. Amen. But the truth of the matter is this. You cannot give, especially to the cause of God, and remain poor. The reason, the source of my prosperity is in the virtue of giving, the grace of giving that God has given me. And there is no here that does not have that grace Luke chapter 6 verse 38 said give and it will be what? Give it to you. A good measure. Press down. Shake it together and run over. We be poured into your lap. Excuse me. Where do you pour prosperity? It's not pocket. The measure that will be poured on you will be too big for your pocket that we have to put it on your lap. That's what giving does. So when you give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Mommy, show you have gone to market to buy gari before. If you want to buy the gari, what do you do? 
you put it to shake it. You press. Hey, Jorada. When you are used to buy Gary. Mommy, I know it's not saying the truth. Because if you say the truth, you won't be boasting about it. When you carry Gary, what do you do? You carry it from women who you carry with their chest and do it like this. He said, when you give, that's how God does. You say, how do we reward this person? She will not, she will not carry it. I've had it as a valid experience. That anytime I give to a cause, it comes back to me in multiple returns. A plenty giver cannot be a plenty receiver. A plenty leader cannot receive plenty. He has no capacity to manage abundance. People that don't give, you will find that they always beg. You always beg. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 24. It says, one person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another person will told unduly, but comes to poverty. <laughs> and you'll be asking, who should become poor? The person give you or the person receive? The person give you. Eh? The person give you, but the Bible says no. The person that ends up poor is the one I always receive that does not give. Yes, sir. When we are talking about prosperity and the anointing to prosper, you can't disconnect it from a regular giving. They trust you. A stingy person cannot prosper. It is not a cause. That is scripture. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. It says, God loves a cheerful giver and blesses them abundantly. That is the definition of prosperity. Your giving is an expression or a demonstration of a capacity to be a channel to God. For example, God wants to do something. You have a neighbor that's been asking God, God, I need someone that can help me pay my school fees. I'm in need. And God wants to use you. And he knows that if you give you this money, it's actually okay. You will need to do that. If he puts this money in your hand, in a new TV, you will use it, but he will not give you. As I am speaking, you cannot give money to somebody to go and run errands for you and give the person the exact money. Is that what you will do? I want to send it to Abuja to go on last for me. Even government has speaking as they are, they give a sack code when they send someone there. Yes, sir. And even for government, the security vote is more than the salary. Civil servant always wants to travel. You know why? Because of a sack code. It is joy. Let my workplace send you on an error. How much God? If God is one sending you on an error. Make it a decision that no, I'm not going to hold back. When I'm talking about giving, I'm not talking about giving to the church or giving to me as a person. I'm saying that just having brought out to be a channel God can flow. There are many 1,001 persons that God wants to use you to be a flow to that is not even outside the church at all. There are destinies around your life that God has hung on you, waiting for you to be open handed, so that you can be instrumental to. Your life does not consist in the abundance of what you accumulate. Build 10 houses today. When you die, they will start dividing. You told me that you travel, and the mansion your forefathers have built have become what? A rock of ruin. Nobody wants to go there. Nobody wants to. Imagine if they have used that money to, that you used to build that mansion to build certain lives. You have that demonstrate your apostles. Look at lives that are connected to you. What from you has flowed into them? How have they involved being around you? Can you point to one person you say, I am now 60, but it is through me this person became who she is, even if the person is ungrateful?
There are many people crying out to God for a destiny ever. And you ought to be that destiny ever. But your stinkiness and stiff handedness has denied you of that grace, of that privilege. There's somebody that was around me. I always pray for that person to be in need. Because every time that person said, I need something, if I always call, do you need something? Say, I don't need. Because every time he said, I need something, I know that provision is coming. Are you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I always pray. Shall not be stranded. But every time he said, I need this, I will thank God. God has a release. She said, I know that she's a fighter ground. Because I'm not bad that whatever he is, he's you or she's coming. Anytime she's, she's in need, desperate need, I know that God wants to open something. But I know that there's something about her. But the person was sent to us to help. And if God sends the person to us to, 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 to help, that means God will be taking care of the person, right? Yes, sir. So when the person prays to God for a need, his heart will use. And he can't use us to bless, and there will not be the need. Yes, but prosperity is connected to people that are depending on you for prosperity. Yes, sir. Mm. Your prosperity is what? It's is connected to people that are dependent on you. I have four children. Anytime they are in need, they are school fees or whatever. I let them pray. My my something we used to jump when I hear them pray with their mother. I will grind up with this particular example. Pastor G is here. I was saying in a three bedroom flat. Now that guy sit down, he said she come and stay in two places. And she that I put in for trouble. <laughs> I carry my children there. Then daddy will like the house. Daddy will like the house. Then move into the house. And when he told me the price, I said, this kind of money, I am not get it to attend. But since I carry them there, every day, Father, provide money for one year. Daddy, provide money for every day they were praying. Daddy, when, when I wouldn't pack packing in, I said, God, no be trouble with this. I carried them on the 1st of September to go and look at the place. On the 15th of September, the landlord called me. He said, you have not packed to the house. I said, which house, sir? You have not paid. You can, I mean, if I'm lying, I say, I'm supposed to be alive. And I said, which house? I said, I've got the key. I said, which house, sir? I said, I've not paid. He said, who told you? Payment is what I'm asking for. He said, let me call you back. I said, drop call. I was receiving like five different calls. Sir, I do not have Sir, where is your house? Sir, give me this key. They brought key to me in my house. How many months after did I pay the agent? One year. Only be One cup, my wife could not sleep for two months. She just woke up in the night. And then what happened? Sir, what of you they said we should pack up? I said, I'm giving up giving us all our properties. But when I moved from my house, we made property in the house, so I gave out everything. I said, even if they said they should pack out today, why are we going to start again? I said, what kind of fear is it? I bind you. You have known my house. Most of you have been there. Yes, sir. I moved to that house without paying landlord agency fee. Nothing. Pastor Soji, did I pay one come up? For how long did I stay there without paying? It can only be God. Have you seen? I can you move to a house without paying? Not possible. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hey, Papa, be the house. Not possible. My wife started hearing these strange voices in the house. Because you can't move into something I know, like that, and you not know, think of mine. He says, if you call that strange spirit, he says, if the strange spirit, I don't dare yet. What strange spirit? They will leave. This is the problem. See, today, if I pay my landlord, he prays for me, I show you his death message. God bless you, sir. Sir, me, tenant. I only be God. Prosperity by God. Yes, sir. Prospering by God. A supernatural possibility that you can enjoy. You can thrive in place of prosperity. And that's what God has asked me to transfer to you tonight. That's going to be here. Dimensions of prosperity that you cannot imagine can be your experience. Amen. I'm telling my story that it looks like a fiction to you. But it is true, it is real. And that will be your experience. Amen. Things will begin to happen in your life. Amen.
when you are telling a third party, they will say you are lying. Mm. Because the Bible says that when the Lord returned the captivity of Zion, it was like a dream. We were like a den that wants dream. dreams. Rest your feet. Begin to appreciate God. I'm going to do something very prophetic tonight. Everybody in the house that wants to connect to a grace of prosperity, the Lord is saying that you touch your hand. That going forward, whatsoever you lay that hands upon will triumph. Whatsoever you lay that hands upon will prosper. Anything you point at at getting by the function of God's power that creates prosperity, you will attract. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will bring your life on a smooth path. The Lord will bring your feet on a smooth ground. On the straight path, you walk in and prosperity this year. Lift up your voice and begin to declare that this year I function by the power of prosperity. In the name of Jesus, this year I cease to struggle. This year I cease to struggle. In the name of Jesus, Vincent has walked with me so closely. There's never been a time we did something desperately that it does not come to miraculously. It's a great you can enjoy when you're on the brink and you need an urgent intervention. Something will just happen. Something will just happen. That is grace for prosperity. And by the time you have put all the things I've mentioned, you are skillful, you have the knowledge of God, you are doing something. God will use everything as a channel to prosper you. Say, Father, it's thy season of prosperity. I activate the anointing for prosperity. Now, in the name of Jesus, I activate the anointing for prosperity. Now, in the name of Jesus, I activate the grace for wealth. I activate the supernatural endowment that prospers a man. I activate the capacity oh, to be prosperous. I cease to beg. I cease to be in lack. I cease to be in want. In the name of Jesus. Then the word of God for somebody here tonight. God said a lot of us. The trend line of struggle in your life is broken. Yeah. Trend line speaks about a pattern of struggle. All your life, it has been full of struggle. But by this anointing tonight, that trend line of struggle is broken. Amen. And that trend line of struggle is destroyed. Amen. Exceedingly, that was a man that is desperate for God's kind of prosperity. His life has been synonymous with struggle. There will be so many prospects and promises, but nothing to show as fruit. We are going to pray that prayer tonight. The prayer of Jabez. Say, Oh God. Oh God. I can't hear you. Oh God. You need to see how Jabez will pray the prayer and everything. Oh
is going into prayer. Oh Lord, my Father, oh, Lord, my Father. by this anointing, enlarge my capacity, oh, my multiply my ability, break my limits. Turn into the prayer now. Violent one. Kazati Bosho. Rakazana Bosho. Baby said, this anointing makes my cup to overflow. It's an anointing that goes beyond the container that a man brings. Enlarge my course. Enlarge my course. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God has said you will bless the work of your hand. When the Lord blesses the work of your hand, a force that nothing can resist comes behind so The Bible says that when this anointing of prosperity came upon Jesus, he said his fame went far and abroad. You may be in Shagamu, but your fame will go far and abroad. Amen. There are vessels that people travel from all over the nations to come and meet them. You know, I went to Canaan land some weeks ago. We were trapped for like five hours. And I was asking myself, how come 100,000 persons gather here every Sunday? People fly from America to bring their child to that school. School in, in, in inside the third place is in the bush. Anointing. People will labor to get to you. This anointing was on David. He said he wanted to drink water from the camp of the enemy. A man carried salt, fought to and fro, and brought water. Are you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. They invited in David. The prophet said nobody should sit down until he comes. This anointing brings you to right lights and gives you supernatural attention. Yes, sir. There are people who have no peace until they patronize you. If Satan has a counterfeit, don't bring their world. Is that one of the quality? Is it God that does not have the original? Then where the ego be? Where the carcass is? Yeah, this year the Lord will make you a carcass. Yeah. I'm not saying that in a negative sense, but that you become an object of readiness. Yeah. That men will gather around your family. Yeah. I think you will become an object of readiness. Yeah. That men will gather around your family. Yeah. Make sure you have a walk in your hand. You have a walk in your hand. That is your prayer. If you're a career person, pray that prayer. Lord, prosper the work of my hand. Daniel was a career man. God so blessed him that he served three kings. Three kings. Every king, as there was a change of government, they were me for him. Say, Lord, bless the work of my hand. Focus on what you ought to be doing. Say that I sent an helper Amen. to support your cause. Yeah. Yeah. Say, let not let the helper come 
and be asking, what am I here to do? Say, so put your hands on the plow. For I've sent help your way. Put your hands on the plow. I have sent help your way. Put your hands back to the plow. The Lord is saying to somebody, I can't find any containers to fill. Say the oil is available, but there are no bowels. The anointing is available. There is nothing to fill. You cannot provide the vacuum to God and be praying. It is in vain. It's a prayer and miss. God said the Lord, go and prepare the vessel. I can feel my anointing. Go and find something that, I, that can become the anchor for the blessing. Go and engage the process through which I can multiply your elements. Here yeah, there's another. Say that which is in your hand is not your blessing, but They don't eat your seed, plant it. And by this, I don't think you come out with you in church. It might be that you go and invest it. That money in your hand is not for you to spend it. Plant it, that's what the Lord is saying. No matter how small, the business may be something big that you want to start. Begin with what you have here. So I put it on the ground. And if the logic is to bring it, to the presence of God and you are trusting God, do it. Whatever He says that you do, do it. Whatever conviction you have, do it. But don't say the Lord, that which is in your hand is not your blessing, it's a seed. Don't squander it. You have started touching it already. Amen. But don't say the Lord, don't squander it. Put it to the ground. Ah! Isaac will have suffered a shortage of the subtle if you have cooked those seeds he planted to eat because there is famine. Are you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. There was famine and he has seed. The wisest thing to do is to eat it and die like that woman. That we do. That told Elijah, said the last thing we have is to eat it and die. Thank God you obey instruction. Don't eat it, plant it. He likes it as eating the seed he planted. There is nothing to eat. And that is what God said. What is in your hand is a seed. Don't consume it for what? Plant it. It could be investment, it could be giving whatever it is.
married and transferred for prosperity. I don't know how it is, but I've been feeling a weight since morning. And I know it was that weight. When this thing was right there, I said I need to go back and pray. When it came, I was not in cloud. As I sat with E for about an hour, the weight was heavy. I said I'm going back. And I can still feel the weight is not in the It is a purpose that God said transfer. And as I touch your hand tonight, Whatever your level is, that will be your base going forward. Amen. The Lord will catapult it to new lives. There will be a transfusion of power Amen. to make you choose that will prosper. We need some more God, one by one. Wow. 
anointing. Mercy will follow you. That is anointing. Surely, grace will follow you. Father, we 